past fatal heart impact, past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions. Back on mass, grab reactions, jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for the Alrighty. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Kiru's show here, and we're actually doing more one-shots. And this one, I know you guys really, really want me to cover. What if Deku was the Red Hood? Now, this idea is one I am willing to cover because the Red Hood is one of my favorite characters. However, I do want to still cover the idea, but I want to make it different. I've seen what a lot of people do with this particular character. I've seen certain things that everybody does do, and I want to try and make mine unique and different. So I usually just start out with a thought, and if that thought does spiral into more and more possibilities, I usually do go with that idea. And just recently, I found a way to do this one that may actually turn it into a real series. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably jumping with anticipation and really do want me to do this. So let's just start out with the one shot. And if I do get positive feedback, let's just keep it at, hmm... Let's just keep it at that. Now, with that being said, what if Deku was the Red Hood? Now, as many people may know or may not know, the Red Hood is Jason Todd, the second Robin who, after being kidnapped by the Joker, he was tortured for two and a half years in an abandoned wing in Arkham Asylum. And after he was murdered by the Joker, Batman, yeah, he believed to have failed. And the League of Assassins, they actually did bring the Robin back from the dead. However, he was insane due to Lazarus' madness. And this sort of did spiral. He escaped from the League of Assassins and went on to become the Red Hood. And I don't believe he ever actually recovered from the Lazarus Madness, so he may still suffer from it in some sort of way. It, hmm, actually, that does explain his twisted nature. That and the fact that he's a fucking psycho. Anyways, now. With that being said, we do currently have in Gotham City, where the police, they've been investigating a lot of strange gang violence. Gang members all around Arkham, they've been turning up as murdered. And it's not the traditional shootout style. There is a problem here. Many of the men who've been found dead, they are killed with the same types of gadgets as Batman would use. However, instead of battered rings, you have ninja stars. And instead of, well, bruises and, you know, what you'd find with Batman, cuts, you do actually have bullet wounds and corpses. So, it seems kind of strange. There must be another new vigilante in town. So, they're just mimicking Batman. However, the police know that eventually they'll run into the big guy. And once that person does... Batman, he's going to try to stop them from killing. So, the police, they could try to handle this now. However, yeah. A little bit more death in Gotham isn't really too much of a big deal. This place is a corrupt city. And as they see it, this guy is doing what Batman won't. So really, why should they stop it? They know that if this person who's a copycat vigilante, they try to take on one of the higher powers, Two-Face, 
well, the Penguin, and even other major villains here, they could actually come out on top. Even Black Mask. If they can take him down, then that's it, really. Some parts of the Underworld will start to crumble. And many things will happen. Now, we do currently cut over with Batman. As he is trying to think about everything. It's nearly been about five years since Izuku was taken from him. The boy from Japan. His second Robin. His son. Izuku, he was, well, too good for this world. He saw the light in everything. And Batman, he misses that. He's more dark and broody than he should be. There's, well, Dick Grayson, but he's Nightwing now. And he's currently doing his own things with his own, his own separate team. You have Tim. His third Robin. And, well, you even do have Damien. But, recently there's been something wrong. There's been cases of strange murder. And from what he can tell from looking at certain patterns, the way these people have been beaten, the way they've been attacked, it does somewhat go in line with the League of Assassins. The weapons do seem similar. Swords, shurikens, and well, cutting edge tools. However, firearms. That's the thing that does surprise him. The League of Assassins, they don't usually use firearms. In fact, if he remembers correctly, Talia would be the only one who would. So the fact that others are doing this now, it doesn't add up. And we do actually have where Bruce, he does get a look back on the footage he's been given by the Joker. As there is whenever he does go to play it. As the Joker, he's currently walking around the room. And Izuku, he's sitting in the chair, hunched over forwards. And Bruce, he can tell just by looking more closely, he's been put through it. He has a J burned onto his face. Then, he even does have barbed wire preventing him from leaning backwards. And then there's just looking at him. Whenever Izuku does look up and open his mouth, he has several teeth missing, and presumably pulled out. Along with even looking down at Izuku's hands, and well, his bare feet. Which, they do look to be soaked in blood, along with even his hands. Now. Bruce knows exactly how far the Joker must have pushed him, how far the Joker hurt his son. But even then, Bruce, whenever he discovered all of this, he couldn't bring himself to do it. He couldn't bring himself to break that code. And as Bruce is going over everything, there actually is tonight, where we do actually cut to Alfred Pennyworth the butler to Bruce Wayne, as he's currently just standing there and dusting an old vase. Now, the door to Wayne Manor actually does have the bell ring, and as soon as the bell does ring, Alfred, he does get to actually turn his head confused. The fact that that's not the front gate does alarm him. And there actually is whenever Alfred, he does go to walk over towards the old, well, clock, and go to pull a shotgun out from behind it. Him loading two shells as he does walk over to the front door. And he does just try to think. If they're dealing with another robber trying to break into the manor, then it's best to probably let him handle this. Now, as he does walk over, there is actually whenever the door is open. And Alfred, he does just stand there with a shotgun in his left hand. As they do, or he does at least look to see a man stand there in a cloak. It's dark, and it's actually somewhat raining outside. As he does ask this man exactly, who might he be? Yes, hello. 
I was curious to speak to Mr. Bruce Wayne. Hmm? Bruce Wayne? Master Wayne is not here at the moment. Hmm. Please don't lie to me, old man. Hmm. I'm sorry. Don't lie to me, old man. I know Bruce is here. In fact, he's hiding downstairs, isn't he? Now, Alfred, he is caught off guard by that statement. As he does look at, watches the man, he does get a look up towards him, and a smile just pop onto his face. Now, Deco, he immediately does force his way into the actual manor. As Alfred, he does get a lunge backwards and go to try to pull the gun. As soon as Deku does lunge in, he actually is going to reach for the shotgun and go to throw it upwards into the air. As Alfred, he does pop both shells off. Now, the sound immediately does ring out through the manor. And there is actually where Bruce, he does go to go upstairs and try to find out exactly what may have happened. Now, Tim Drake is currently out on patrol with, let's just say... Steph, I think her name is. The Bat family's gotten a lot larger since the last time I looked at it. Now, Tim is currently out doing that. Nightwing, he's out with the Titans. That leaving Damien and Bruce here at the manor, along with Alfred. Now, as soon as Bruce, he does start to run up to the staircase, there is actually Damien, who he was just going, well, he was working out. However, once he did hear this sound, he immediately did start turning and running towards the direction. As we actually do have upstairs, where Batman just ran in through the clock. Or, well, the hole in the wall where the clock is. And whenever he does get there, you do actually have the man in the cloak, who he's currently just holding a knife to Alfred's throat and asking if he has a minute to talk. Who are you? Hmm, who am I? I thought you would have recognized me. What are you talking about? Why are you here? <laughs> Come on, Bruce. You know why I'm here. Now, there is actually Damien, who, after running down the staircase and seeing Alfred with a knife to his throat, he does get a pause, asking Father exactly what to do. And he is told by Bruce to just stand there for a minute. And that he can try to handle this. Bruce trying to ask questions about this guy. And find out exactly why he's here at Wayne Manor. How he could have discovered he was Batman. And Deku, he's very enraged. Him asking about Damien and him being another Robin. And, yeah... Deku, he does know that this is actually Bruce's son. And it does seem kind of pissed to him. The fact is, Damien, he shouldn't be here. He shouldn't be a Robin. And then Deku, he does start to ask about Tim Drake. The Robin that he has. Now, Deku does start to berate him, asking him about his other Robin. And there are actions where Bruce, he does start to at least talk about Dick Grayson or Nightwing. Asking what of him. Now, Deku, he actually does get very annoyed. As he does go to at least bring his hand up and smash Alfred's head into the wall. Before going to charge Bruce and going to throw something towards him. Bruce actually going to bring up his cape to try to block the attack as Deku does rush forwards. Now, as Deku does rush forwards, there actually is whenever Bruce does go to run forwards too. However, Deku, he beat him to it, being able to grab Bruce and smash him right into the wall, going to bring back his hand and going to smash him directly as hard as he can into the guts. Now, this is actually very surprising. And there is whenever Bruce, he does go to bring up his hand and directly to smash Deku across the face. However, upon hitting him, he finds it to be quite strange. He does go to bring up his left hand and go to smash him in the face again. And there actually is where he does see that his punches, they seem to have not only an effect, but they are landing. And there actually is then Damien, who he does rush in and try to at least grab a fancy, well, let's just say, let's say a spoon. 
He grabs a spoon off of a tray Alfred did have. And whenever he does actually get up to Deku, he does go to try and stab him in the arm hard. However, Deku, whenever he does get hit in the arm, he does immediately go to turn and smash Damien across the face. As he does tell the little shit to stay out of this. As Deku, he does go to go back to dealing with Batman. Before going to pull back his hood and revealing his face. Now, Bruce, he does just stand there very surprised. As Deku, he is there. And the moment that actually has happened, Bruce, he does, well, look speechless. And then there actually is Damien. After he does get off of the floor with his, well, bloody nose. Watching as, well, his father, he's not fighting back. Look at me, Bruce. Izuku. So you do recognize me. How is this possible? You're supposed to be dead. Hmm? Oh, she didn't tell you. I see. Well, I'm back. I thought you would have known better. You do a shit no ordinary man should ever have to. And you find me coming back to be very bad? I never said it was bad, but... Let me ask you a question, Bruce. When I died, why didn't you kill him? I don't... You don't kill. Is that what you're going to say? Come on. I want to hear an actual answer, Bruce. After what the Joker did to me. 78 broken bones... A shattered leg, a busted skull, a collapsed lung, and well, he tried taking one of my eyes. Couldn't quite pop it out of the socket like he expected. He just split it in two. You know, hell, he was waiting for what you do to him. He was wondering. He asked me about it myself. What I thought he would get. However, guess what? Those meaningless conversations turned to nothing. Because you did nothing, Bruce. Now, Deku is going to pull back his fist. Smashing Bruce Wayne across the face hard. Informing him that he really should have just killed that rotten fucking clown. Now, Deku should start to wail on Bruce. As Bruce, he does at least recover his footing. The shock of finding out that Izuku is alive, that's, well, getting his mind to try to turn. And there is actually whenever Bruce, he does get to block a punch. Being able to bring up one of his arms, as Deku does smash into that one. Bruce trying to actually go to grab Deku by his left wrist, that is holding on to him, and trying to go on the defensive, or on the offensive. Now, Deku and Bruce, they do start to at least fight. And there is all throughout Wayne Manor. Where the two, they do cause a bit of commotion. Now, Bruce is actually able to smash Deku through a wall. As the two were sent flying through a fancy looking table, and a candle did actually go to roll off of it. As soon as they did hit the ground, it immediately did spark the carpet. And the carpet did start to catch. Now, Damien, he did try to run in and help his father. Try to deal with this, well, crazy guy. The fact is, he's coming in here and claiming to be the second Robin. Damien, he knows enough about the second Robin. To know that's a subject Bruce avoids talking about. Since, it hurts him. Now. This is where Damien, yeah. They do start to do something. Batman alone would be able to take down the Red Hood. However, the fact is, Deku, he's tougher and stronger than a regular person. Thanks to the Lazarus Pit reinforcing and basically bringing his body back up to speed. And then there's even his training. The fact is, currently, Bruce, yeah. He can't take him on alone. And after Damien does break away to try to deal with the fire, that gets worse. Now, there actually is whenever Deku, he does decide that he is going to need to retreat. 
and he does get to pop something out from underneath his cloak. Before he does start to throw them all throughout the area. And Bruce just watches marbles do land onto the ground. And he does start to think back on whenever Deku was a kid. He used to use these to trip up the bad guys. And then whenever Deku, he does start to move backwards and directly go to leap upwards into the air towards the window. And he does get at least a pull thing out of his pocket. Bruce, he actually is going to take cover. As Deku, he blows up the tiny explosives. Now, Deku's then flying backwards through the front window. As the explosion does blow up this entire room. Deku, after he's sent flying out of the room, he does actually smash his back into the ground. Before going to flip his body over and get back onto his feet. Quickly going to run away. As Deku, he got no inches out of Bruce. He expected something. But he let the Joker live. And that was Bruce's mistake. A mistake that he feels like need needs to be addressed. Or even corrected. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed the one-shot. Or... Well, someone once called this a trailer or an extended trailer. Anyways, with that being said, I do just hope you guys enjoyed it. And let me know what you guys do think. Catch you guys in the next ones.